Hey Marcus, here is your Harmony quantizer. Uh, I'm a little while off having a proper user manual written, so I figured I'd do a, a quick video for you going over all the features, so that once it arrives you can plug it in and get harmonizing. So I have it patched in, this is the CV input, uh, which I've got being controlled from this sequencer. I've just got a lot, so I'm used to using a single step as manual control. The, so the CV comes in, there's an attenuverter, which center position is, so this is now 10 volts coming from the sequencer and I can go up or down from that position. So this is now fully attenuated, the center position, so I'll make it the 10, op, the 10 volt range, I'll scale that down to two volts to give me two octaves up and down from the, from the sequencer. There we go. And then the four CV outputs, root, third, fifth, and seventh. I've got those patched into these four oscillators. So root, third, fifth, and seventh. And let me bring up some volume so we can hear it. So, there we go. Here's root, and then third. major seventh chord. Okay, so of course it requires that f all four oscillators be tuned, tuned to a consistent unison. Um, that can sometimes be a bit tricky if you've got this set to a chord, so then you're having to tune by ear the root, third, fifth, seventh, depending on what quality it is. So if you hold down these two buttons, double tap C, it goes into unison mode. So all the four outputs are sending out the exact same voltage. The transpose goes up to 10 volts, down to minus 10 volts. So. So at any point you can just hit that button combination and you've got fixed voltages that you can then reach in your oscillator from. Hit C again and we're back to back to normal. Okay, so the main interface controls, the top pot here is the chord uh, inversion. So root inversion, first, second, third. So it's basically reordering the the voicing. Uh, this can be CV controlled, of course. Uh, the second knob is the voicing spread. So at the moment we're in close position, so all four notes are within an octave. Then drop two and drop three are quite typical guitar voicings. So if you're using the A string as the root, or as the as the, uh, the the bass note on the chord, and the drop three is if you're using the low E string. Uh, structurally, it's actually just the close position, and then whatever voicing inversion you're in, it takes uh, drop two is the second highest note in the voicing, drop down an octave, drop three is the third highest note in the voicing, drop down an octave. Uh, the open voicing is actually based on the drop two, and then I spread out by another octave, one of the other voices. I found it to be the most musically useful. Um, so if I patch the CV input into sequencing the chord inversion. Without a CV input in the top, uh, you can hit the transpose button and now the transpose fader will give you two octaves up or two octaves down within the enabled notes. So it essentially adds to the, the incoming voltage level. Okay, so this is now sequencing the actual uh, root and then extrapolating the chord harmony from that. 
So as you can see, the uh, card quality is automatically changing with the voltage. Uh, so the knob doesn't do anything by default. Uh, to enable that, you punch in the button and then the knob overrides and you have manual control over what the card quality is. Uh, that can also be sequenced. So if you had a geophonic sequencer, for instance, you could be sequencing the, the root of your card progression as well as the card quality to get really unique custom voicings. Uh, okay, so, so far this has all been in quantizer mode, where, as you'd expect, you know, whatever notes you have enabled, Then you only have the uh, the note the chords that are enabled from the scale. Uh, if you hold the transpose button and tap the mode button, then we change into the performance mode. So that button combination toggles between quantizer and performance mode. In performance mode, the keyboard is directly playable. Gate output also sends a steady gate compared to a trigger for, uh, as it does in the quantizer mode. Which means that I could patch out to uh, an envelope generator and control filter cutoff or something and then from the keyboard you're performing the amplitude as well. And of course if you punch in override then you have parallel motion of whatever the selected chord quality is. So one one slight downside to this format is the uh, you can see when the knobs enabled the white line doesn't doesn't actually match up exactly to the to the LEDs. Unfortunately that's just down to inconsistencies in potentiometers and their uh, linearity. Uh, I did try compensating for that, but it would then throw off the, the curve of the CV, so I figured having linear response of the CV was preferable to having a white line match up exactly to the, the pots. Uh, the production version I'll be opting for a knob similar to this type here, but without the marker, so it'll be just blank and you'll see the position based on what LED is there. So, hope you don't mind that too much. I guess next layer of functionality we have uh, multiple modes for the transpose fader. When it's not enabled, it doesn't uh, it doesn't affect the control in either quantizer mode or uh, keyboard mode. Uh, so when you enable it and it's green, then it acts on uh, as an offset to where you are in the enabled scale. If I hit it once more until it turns amber. This acts as a global transpose, so I've got two octaves up or two octaves down and actually moves in semitones. So this is now my home key. So it means I can diatonically shift it globally to an entire new tonal centre without the need to retune four oscillators. And then additional to that, when it's red, it's fine tune adjust up an octave or down an octave. So this is now home key. So it's been shifted up by a few semitones and then detuned. And actually retains those values between power cycles. And then to clear that, hold transpose, double tap C and it will clear those offset values. So you're now back to uh, zero volts being the, the origin point. Uh, okay, so next would be musical modes, I guess. So if we hold down transpose, then I think these might look like they're blinking a bit on the video. That's just frame rate issues. Uh, so now we have one LED 
brightly lit and the rest dimly lit. So this is for Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. So you can set and forget, you can choose what modal center. So say we go to, to Lydian, then I hit transpose again. We're now in the Lydian mode, which would be a major scale with a sharp four. now means that the the selection of the chord quality is derived from the Lydian mode. So to compare that, I'll go back to Ionian, major scale. more as a, a tonal color palette I guess so each each musical mode is going to have its own characteristic and the way that I designed it uh, so say we're, we're in Ione at the moment that would be our chord scale would be all the white notes and the, the black keys would be the non diatonic tones uh, so for this is where my personal preference came into the, the design I chose what, for every single musical mode, I chose what I feel are the most musically relevant modal interchange chords, uh, so that there's as little uh, dissonance as possible, I guess. So in this case it's flat 2 major 7, flat 3 major 7, flat 6 major 7, so it's the, the tritone is the minor 7 flat 5. So it means that if you're moving chromatically, Musically, so you don't end up with, uh, you know, I guess default it would be whatever the last note was. When you go diatonic, it would shift the whole thing up, which in this case it does. But in certain modal contexts, you would end up with a lot of dissonance. So this way, when you're sequencing, you can have any combination of notes selected in, and they are harmonically relevant to the modal center. So if I go into, let's go into something darker, let's use uh, Phrygian. So now that would be Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Yeah, so now, so that's our Phrygian mode. Very different uh, tonal center. It's much darker. We're in a, a, a minor mode now. Uh, so that's that's for the Ionian mode set for the based on the major scale. If I tap the chord quality button, uh, you can see the option changes. So this is now outlining the harmonic minor mode. So we have all the seven harmonic minor mode sets, which uh, you know, I think it's uh, put them written down here. Long time since I had these memories. So yeah, Aeolian sharp seven, Locrian sharp six. So it's all derivative of the the Ionian modes, but with more alt alterations. And I did the same thing. So uh, when this is selected, there it, it retains some sort of um, harmonic relativity. So it's as diatonic as it can be. I find when doing this, if you mute the seventh voice, you can get some really interesting.
you see, the gate is sending out trigger pulse whenever it latches to a new, a new card tool. And also varying the amount of slew between individual voices. Okay, and one last feature to show you. back to just the major scale, a nice home key. Okay, so you can see for the chord quality, uh, we've got the you know a good range of um, typical seventh seventh voice chords. Uh, the last four options are just numbered, so they're actually user definable. So if I have any of these selected, hold transpose and double tap this button. The actual chord tones of that chord are highlighted. So I can now... There we are. So I can customize and define my own chord clusters. So let's do something already. So, so there's a sus2 and a sevis2. Cheers.